Let's start with uh, profile. So we got the gap fill as expected. This was talked about in the pre-market perspective. We actually got a little bit more. We went past the gap notice. Um, went a little bit deeper than we thought we would go. But that's okay. So if you're playing for the gap fill, you had this move here to the, uh, to the RTHI. And I was talking about in the pre-market perspective, this TPO prominent notice that that was listed as a key level, um, which is important because, and I can't stress this enough, is that remember, I only list key levels that I think are actually going to be in play. I could easily just give you a pre-market perspective every single morning that says, oh, here's the RTH high, here's the overnight high, here's the RTH low, and that's it, you know. I just list uh, every key level on down the road, but I don't do that. I, this, I only talk about ones that I believe are going to be in play. So we went to the prominent POC. So now we don't have a VPOC for today. And one of the other things I talked about in the pre-market perspective was pay attention to where value develops and notice that value is not lower. That even the low today, which is really cool how these profile references work, is when the market's dumping like this, and you should know by now that it's just the liquidation break. Like if you recall what I sent you in the um, alert, I said this gap fill area is a buy, right? Now, the fact that that turned out to be wrong doesn't mean that it's not a buy lower. You have to still understand it is still a liquidation break. It is still a gap fill. It's not going to crash the market. It's just not going to happen because it's old business being transacted. So if you have like a good like understanding of what happens first between old and new, right? That's essentially the big secret to how the market works. That that's it. That's the only big secret is that old business gets transacted first and then there's new business. And a trending day happens when both businesses come together a regular day that's in range happens when usually only one of them and not enough people from the new step aboard it's all just old so this is imp this is an important thing to keep in keep in mind right if you think of it that way it'll keep you on the right side of things most of the time is it what is being transacted here old business or old business and new business so old business is what these people who have bad location and look at how much how wide this is look at how much time was spent here you have to think about that when the market opens is that these people here right look at how much of it there is so they have bad location and they're not the type of people who are going to be these these overnight people are not the type of people that are going to um be holding for longer gains. They're not buying it overnight because they think that the day time frame is going to go higher, right? These are just insomniacs here, and there's not a lot of volume transacted in the in the overnight. And then, again, as was discussed in the pre-market perspective, this is the sort of piling on effect is why I was saying that even though I don't know for sure if we're going to get it, the odds are stronger that we do get it on a day like today because we have the stacking and the, the the stacking you know the piling on effect is this overnight inventory is skewed net long i said skewed because it's not 100 percent because you have all these single prints below but obviously the majority of it is above and then you have on top of it 100 percent net long overnight inventory so that's the situation coming into the open which turned out to be exactly as expected and then as it plays out or once it finishes playing out all you have to do is immediately switch your thinking cap take off the short-term hat and put on the longer-term hat and when you put on the longer-term hat you start asking yourself questions like how low did the low go oh look at that it went right to value area low and it bounced hmm must be short-term traders controlling the market right that's one way to look at it. Number two, hmm, must be bulls are still in control because buyers came into this very nuanced level and snapped it up. 
So in tomorrow's trade, what would we call this low? This is a quiz. You can type it in. I know you can't. I know we're in webinar mode, so only I can see it, but you can tell me. What, what would I name this low tomorrow? Yeah, exactly. Weak low. No, weak low. Not a poor low, not a secure low. It's a weak low. Weak low. It's a weak low. If we think about our definitions of the weak low in our in the shadowtrader.net glossary that you should all be familiar with, a weak low is a low that is obviously created by short-term momentum type traders because it is a low happening at a very nuanced, very specific level. And remember, I always use myself as the example. Always use myself as the example. And if you can put yourself into the narrative and you know how you act, then it'll be that much easier for you to believe that the rest of the world is going to act that way too because nobody is different. There's nothing new in the game of speculation. There never has been, never will be because there hasn't been anything new in human nature for X number of billions of years, let alone the tiny sliver of time that we are alive. Nothing's gonna change, nothing, nothing. We're not gonna wake up three years from now and have a different market because greed and fear has been eradicated in people's minds. It's not gonna happen in our lifetime. It's not gonna happen in the next million years. It's just how things are. So this, the market will always continue to be dominated by the different time frames and what they're doing. And that's why you carry these these things forward into your narrative and just think to yourself okay that's fine i know this is a weak low as long as we hold above it we're okay if the market is soft tomorrow and we test this area i might try out a short why not look at this this isn't going to support this is just a kind of spiky this sure as heck isn't going to support this is the rest of the gap fill right this area here is still an unfilled gap I know I'm a horrible uh, artist, you know, but between, you know, this is still an unfilled gap. So why not, right? But again, you're just stacking up the odds in your favor and you're thinking to yourself, hmm, maybe, maybe it can, maybe it won't, right? To fill or not to fill, that is the question. Like I talked, like I quoted that, that Shakespeare from Hamlet yesterday in the PPP, right? Shakespeare had that fantastic piece on gaps filling because he talked a lot about uh, you know, the psychology of buyers and sellers in his plays. Um, last but not least, value. I think I talked about this already, but I'll just mention it again. Value hasn't changed. And because we didn't take out that value very low, everything is, is the same. Right? So this now comes off because we tested the TPO prominent POC. This now comes off because we filled the gap, correct? And this stays, this stays because we still have that VPOC from uh, Christmas Eve, all right? I'm gonna look at some questions here. VGT says, I believe looking at today's internals leads me to believe that price won't break that weak low tomorrow. Do you agree? How could you know that, VGT? Every day is different. That's, a, that's kind of a ridiculous statement. That's, kind of a, that's absolutely a ridiculous statement. Market internals are only um, uh, applicable to the day in question, not, um, not, any other, uh, not the next day. Tomorrow will have its own internals, right? Yeah, Jonathan B says, out, out, damned Pac. Exactly, there you go. There you go. Um, yeah, I believe we've seen the low of the day for today. But again, I carry it forward that it's weak, that if it retests, the market probably goes a little bit lower. But yeah, for the most part, do I think the low of the day could be in? Yeah, I guess, you know, but that's not, you know, I have to really stress you, stress to you guys that, that 
in the bigger picture in terms of, of what could come at us news wise, what might happen this afternoon, whatever, understand that I don't know the answer to that any better than you do with any certainty. All right. I'm just looking in small pieces on down the road, what, what price action can be exploited ahead of me, right? Like a perfect example would be the, 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 the heads up I gave you guys on shop yesterday, right? And just to, you know, I, I sometimes, I don't do this all the time because I don't want to get into the habit of that. I'll take a snapshot of my P&L from the thing to show you that I actually eat my own cooking. And you understand that like, I'm not thinking in my mind that this has to go from where I set at the low of shop and go up 75 points. Do you see what I'm saying? I'm looking at it in chunks. I see it. the the all I'm thinking honestly in my mind is like, yeah, 500 shares, five thousand dollars. I'm gonna make that five grand in about six minutes, and it was right. And now, do you see when I tell you stuff like that? Do you see that you need to take my mindset? and extrapolate it and sort of overlay it on top of the whole market when you see bounces off value area low. That's the futures contingent that sees it, that says, aha, if my buy order is here, where the outside rounded edge of 70% of the volume that traded yesterday, right, of, one stand, of that one standard deviation on that downside, right, from the POC, even if they're not looking at market profile, maybe they're just pulling up some data and they know where that one standard deviation is outside of it and they've got those limit orders in there, okay? Those people who are trading that way are not putting those limit orders in there thinking that they're gonna be long at 37.25 and they're gonna limit out uh, on a new high at 37.55, okay? Their algorithm is putting out orders to get rid of it at 37, 27, 27 and a half, 28, 29, right? Think about it. Because they're this, their mindset is, is my mindset when I saw shop. I see shop, I've been thinking about, I know this level is probably gonna support. I'm like, here's an easy whatever. And that's basically it, all right? So I can't stress enough how important it is that this, this whole thing is nothing more than, than an interplay between all these time frames. And if you're if we, I should say, because obviously, you know, this is not easy. If we are ever in question about what is going on, we just have to ask ourselves who is dominating, who's coming into the into the picture, which which time frames are coming into the picture, right? Okay, so we are now, let's talk about internals for a second before I wrap this up. I don't think there's a whole lot of change here, really, to be honest with you. I don't think there's like a whole lot of change here. Notice that this is not so bullish or bearish. Somebody emailed me, um, gentlemen, and I don't know if you're listening, but they were saying, you know, do you not see that internals are broken? And I'll, I've been thinking about this for a while. I don't really think they are. And that's why I specifically sent you guys the, the picture yesterday of the sectors showing you that there's a reason why the AD line is coming down from the highs, but notice that it never breaks zero. It's still positive at the end of the day. It's just that a lot of stocks on the New York Stock Exchange gapped up and faded and came into a prior days, um, a prior days, uh, the prior days high basically, and then came in, came into it and started trading inside of the prior days range.
that uh phil by the way i think was was amazon which came in at uh 3311 which you can see i just had an order out there but i can't really pay attention to this so i just gonna get rid of it here so i can't really pay attention because i'm talking to you guys um anyway All right, we're starting to roll over. That's why that was probably a good idea to get rid of that. Now the question is, will ES cross below the low, right? Because we have that, that poor low. Or will it stop here? Now I would be thinking probably is that you've got an H pattern in play. So do I like the short here? Probably not. We got an H, and you got this kind of catching its footing at a higher low. This is not really weak enough to drive. This is crap. And this is weak, but not as weak as it could be. So, you know, chances are you could. Okay, now, now you have that information. Now let me show you another piece of information that's super important. How about this for MGI? This should this should put all this should fix you know so really show you something okay very important this is the NQ all right so would you short the ES on the break of the low knowing that NQ is up here in the middle of the range it's a yes or no question Mr Dean you are the winner of a Shadow Trader T-shirt and coffee mug today because you were the first one to answer no way. You are 100% correct. Let's give it up for Mr. Dean. We really don't have those items, just so you know. So it's, it's just kind of like an ongoing thing. Uh, we used to have those items, but we don't. So please don't be, don't be watching your mailbox because nothing will be coming. Um, but anyway, yes, so I, I'm glad this is happening because it's exactly the type of thing that, that used to always trip me up when I wasn't paying attention to intermarket analysis and what the other sides are doing, et cetera, right? So keep that in mind. I don't think it's a good idea to go for a continuation play to the downside when everything I just showed you and in the internals is doing what it's doing, right? But this is in the middle of the range. Let me just actually open up my NQ. I'll request tick data so we have it. Yes. And I'll get my shoes so I have them. That might take a second. We're we're at we're close to developing halfback. Developing, we're right there. Developing halfback on the NQ is at 126450. Look at the little magenta, um, little magenta uh, line here. Not magenta. This, uh, this. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Oh, God, it's it's one of the sixty four colors. What is it? Help, guys, help. What's the dark yellow? What's the dark yellow in the sixty four crayon box? What is it? It's the dark yellow. Not sienna. Nope. Ochre. No. No. Sun, not sunflower. Sunflower is lighter. Not mustard. Not chartreuse. Come on, chartreuse is green. Magenta's purple. Goldenrod. Joanna in Hawaii. Love it. Thank you. Joanna in Hawaii, you also uh, will not be getting a, a T-shirt and coffee mug, but let's just pretend that you might be. Goldenrod. Goldenrod. Love it. Yes. Takes me back to kindergarten. Miss Brodicky was her name. Uh, Kensington, Connecticut. Percival. Percival, uh, James Gates Percival Elementary is no longer there. Uh, sadly enough, it is now an old folks home. But uh, yeah, that was the place. So anyway, you can see we're rallying a bit off of there over the half back. So not that we ever went down to the short, but I'm just saying, you know, it made sense. Not I was just kind of point out why this probably won't work 
coming back down there. So I'm glad all this all this MGI is happening for us to talk about live because now you're you're getting real live examples of kind of how price action works and what we are, you know, us were able to be able to talk about it. All right. All right, let's take a few questions here, uh, if we could. Vlad says, what is your thinking on BABA? So my thinking on BABA should be clear by the play is that I think it's going to go up into here and fill the gap. But I'll be honest with you, I'm kind of tentative here. Notice the size is small, and I'm not sure what the, what the uh, you know, what it should be thus far. But I think there's there's a play here that it wants to move in there. So if we have small size on, so be it, right? I think that it'll get stopped at the 250 at the prior lows. So we got a one by three. Camille says, what is the exit strategy on Baba? The exit strategy, Camille, is to wait as long as possible to see if the spread expands and not close it until as close to January 8th as possible. And the idea is that price will be somewhere within this box preferably as close to 250 as possible all right yeah junior very good you got the saul rosenberg reference you also might get a t-shirt fantastic all right. Would you butterfly Amazon to pin it at 3,400? Maybe a risk reversal against the all-time high at 3,560, all for Thursday's expiry. Fantastic questions. I've been thinking about that myself. I don't really know what the play is in Amazon as of yet. If I did, I'd be all over it. I don't know about the 3,400. I think it's going to go to this trend line first. But the problem is, and this is the reason why I haven't given you guys a play, is because it's really just been moving in one direction since then, right? There's been no chance really of pullback and risk reversal really doesn't make sense because I can't figure out where to put these short puts that would still have value. So the play is, I think, to wait it out and see what happens at this juncture here and see how deep of a pullback we get and then retest. I don't know, or maybe we start to go, but that's what, that's what I'm going to be looking at. And I, I'm really in no hurry here because kind of because of the time of year that it is like, I'm just kind of winding down this year. And I know this is a traditionally bullish week. I've got some stuff on and you know, whatever we have that Apple butterfly working, which is fine. Um, I only took off half because I thought there was, chance that we'd had you know at the at the time there was potential that it could have been a gap and go but we didn't so i don't know i think it's fine well there'll be plenty of ideas in the next year um you know so you know matt says is there a butterfly play play on baba for those of us who are margin limited i think there is matt and this is a fantastic question but be aware that the only thing that's different about that from my trade is that you're going to incur debit when you put on the one, two, one like this. So that's the only difference really. But I think it, it, it does make sense, but you will incur some debit. Okay. You will incur some debit. Bacchus says, will the trade numbers reset to number one in the next year? No, they will not. We just keep, keep, it, keep on trucking. All right, we just keep on trucking. Yeah, PA Trader says that 3,400 has high open interest and volume in Amazon. Well, that's natural because of the roundness of the number. That's just how things go. The there were there will always be big OI around. Um, excuse me, big numbers. Okay, so that's not really any big uh, surprise. All right. Gold also uh, moving up again, which is good for us. And I'm not sure if that's crossed. It hasn't crossed the trend line yet, but I think we're going to keep doing what we're doing. And I'm looking, notice that the puts we sold today are 169s. And there's a method to this madness. I would hope you know by now is notice that you've got your moving averages kind of stacked here. And we might get a pinch of the 20 through the 50, which is bullish. But notice that you've got 50, 20, 
200 and then we're short here under all of them so that kind of makes sense to me that's why and the reason we only do a half size against um uh for now is because it's still kind of early it's only tuesday even though it's a shortened week if we get a signal confirming that we're going to cross this trend line then boom we put on the other half but we probably put it on a little bit higher at 170 because we probably won't get enough credit at the 169 but we'll see okay let me check out time spread see if there's any questions in here Paul in the time spreads room says, can you please explain why NQ is important to ES? So that was the, the conversation that we just finished having about the futures and sort of to encapsulate that, Paul, it's just, it's because this is how markets move. They move in tandem with each other and the money is flowing from one to the other and back and forth. There's a lot of, you know, relative strength, relative weakness plays, et cetera. And that's just how things are. If the markets are out of sync, you're not going to get, um, you know, it's like a cross pollination. It's like one bleeds into the other. So if the NASDAQ is at developing halfback and the ES is at the low of the day, it's just not a good idea to short the ES because the, those buyers in the NASDAQ that are at developing halfback, they're going to thwart it. And that, that buying in the NQ spills over into the ES. It's just these markets move in tandem, even when they seem disconnected to a degree, they're never fully disconnected. So that's that. All right. Keyshore says, is Zoom doomed? It's showing a lot of relative weakness. I don't know that if it's doomed, but obviously I don't think it's a, a stock you want to be in now, given that uh, we have a vaccine, right? If we've got a vaccine and notice the trend line break, that's really the answer. Don't even think about the vaccine. Don't even think about uh, fundamentals. Think about this. Voila. It broke trend it broke a very long-term uptrend. So if you're a bullish type of, you know, buy stocks and hold them or whatever, look at this, you know, trend line break, trend line break. And again, big trend line break. So there's your answer right there. That's all you need to know is keep it simple, keep it technical, you know, keep it money, you know, you do that little money dance. Mamba comments on Tesla. It's been acting like the worst dog the last two days. Haven't been able to make money with it. You know why? Because it's been added to the S&P 500 and now it's a chop fest. And I was saying that this could happen, that, right, that the volatility in Tesla is going to drop for a bit and it needs to pause. There's nothing wrong with Tesla. Tesla is just doing its thing and pausing here. Look at how well it's holding above the 20 period moving average. There's no, um, there's nothing, uh, there's nothing wrong here. It just happens to be not in play right now. Remember, stocks move from being in play to out of play. Stocks move from uh, balance to excess and back to balance. So in the case of Tesla, let's talk about that for a second. Balance, excess, balance, big B, excess, right? That's all. Balance. So what is, how, how do stocks move? What is the, what's the big trick in learning how and when to buy stocks? The moment that they move from balance to excess. And you can figure that out by trend line breaks, trend line break, right? Horizontal break. That's it. Let me go back to, uh, okay. Nicholas says, is there anything on Netflix on the upside when the 580 starts to get some juice? Yeah, it could be. It could be. We've, we've had good luck with this in the past. Oh, this platform, what are you doing here? We've had some luck with this in the past. Five eighty's got some juice now at a dollar twelve, but you could really on a one by three only get five sixty. That's only twenty wide. 
I'm not sure that I like that. Remember, we've been much wider in this. But then again, that was on the put side. I think we had on the call side too, right? I think we've done both sides on this. But yeah, I wouldn't be. I think it's an okay play. 565.80. What's the at the money? Can you do it? So you can't do a one by three right now because the the at the money is eleven dollars. So that means if it went there tomorrow, it'd be like thirty dollars, and then we'd you'd lose money. But obviously, it's not going there tomorrow. I mean, you got to go all the way to five sixty, five eighty. I mean, it could, it could, it might be worth it. I, I might be looking at it. It's kind of a long shot to get to five sixty. That's the problem. So you got a fifty six cent credit. On a 555, you're paying a small debit. You know, that might be better if you can get it for a nickel. I'll work that if it goes in for a nickel. And that might, might you know. So anyway. Yeah, the, web, the, the text is in webinar only mode. So that's why you're not seeing everybody's text. All right. So I'll wrap it up here. It's 1130. Uh, it's time for your humble narrator to uh, figure out what's for lunch. And uh, that's it. Hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your uh, day. Hopefully this uh, discussion was productive for you. And that is it. All right, you guys enjoy the rest of the day and I will be uh, commenting uh, as I see fit. Take care of yourselves.